Hey everybody, what's up? Um, thought I'd do this video before I kind of hop in the shower and get myself ready for work. Yeah, I gotta work around. Uh, I gotta work today, if you will. But I thought I'd th uh, throw this video out here uh, because I just watched Andre Black Nerd Comedy, uh, Black Nerd Andre Meadows uh, do his weekly Ninja Turtles uh, recap. And his review on the episode Earth's Last Stand. Now, even he isn't sure if this is the finale or if it's just, you know, maybe a stoppage before we probably get to the Memorial Day stuff. Because usually around Memorial Day or, or whatever, especially with a show like Ninja Turtles, uh, Nickelodeon likes to hold off on the grand finale stuff until that moment. So I don't know if we'll get it around then or not, but I wanted to talk about something that I think kind of gets thrown in the air, because it looked like even Andre, and all, all due respect, Andre, um, you know, because even you, Andre, you, you kind of felt a little confused here, but this is something that really has always gotten me, and I'm pretty sure anybody else that's watched the Ninja Turtles or any kind of show that's dealt with this kind of scenario. So basically, if you watch Andre's review, uh, the Turtles have been, for the past, for most of the season, in space with the Fugitoid. Now, basically, it's up to this point, final, it's, now, well, basically up to this point, they're trying to get all these pieces of the Black Hole Generator to prevent the Triceraton from using it on Earth to, not only, to, well, as we saw in the original uh, season finale, uh, last season, to destroy the Earth because they want to destroy the Krang. So basically, they go. So basically, for most of the season, they've been in space meeting all these various characters. Raphael getting a new girlfriend, or getting a girlfriend in this version, this incarnation's uh, Mona Lisa. This incarnation uh, in this uh, show's version, an incarnation of Mona Lisa. We get a crossover, which I guess plays in context with the continuity of the season with them and the 80s Turtles. You know, things like that. We get all this happening, and it isn't up till just recently in this episode, from what Andre has said, that the Fugitoid comes out and basically tells them, uh, yeah, you know that um, little tidbit I told you about the Krang creating the um, black hole generator. Yeah, I may have told a little white lie there. You see, I really created it. So yeah, he, so basically, yeah, he finally, it comes up to this, to this moment, to this, uh, I guess you could say this final chapter, where he basically tells the totals, hey, I'm the one that did it. I'm the one that created, that's why you're in the situation now. And of course, as Andre points out in his review, and you could check it out, uh, none of the turtles, mostly Leonardo, are not happy about this, and they don't trust him now. They're like, look, you just basically flat out lied to us this whole time. Because from what you could tell, even though I haven't watched the episode, Andre has to so check out his review at Black, Andre Black Nerd. Um, basically, from what it seems, uh, the turtles basically are not happy about this. Leonardo's not happy because... It's to them, it's like, wait a minute. So you're the one that made this. You drug us up into space for no, basically almost no apparent reason in a ship that travels through time. And you could have easily just gone through time yourself, prevented your human counterpart from doing this, and we wouldn't be in the scenario we're in right now. Stuff like that. So long story short, uh, the Fugitoid looks. The Fugitoid basically says, look, I know I did you wrong. I should have told you in the first place. I'm going to make it up to you, and I'm going to prove that you can still trust me, even though I even though I told this little white lie. And I kind of spit on the screen there for a second. Sorry about that. So, long story short, we get a finale, a climax, just like we did with Transdimensional Turtles, 
but this time it's the turtles that went into up into space in the uh, uh what was it the season in the last season finale in last season's finale fighting along with the turtles that were on earth at the time of that finale in that big climax where of course splinter gets stabbed in the back by shredder but this time as we pretty much all predicted one of the turtles mostly leonardo i think we all predicted this kind of told splinter hey watch your back and sure enough splinter being presented as the badass sensei he is in this version grabs shredder's arm and shredder's about to thrust him in the back just steps back grabs his arm turns around and beats the crap out of him prevents him from doing so and long story short the turtles end up saving the day with the future toy beaming up the black hole generator like he should have in the first place i guess and going off and sacrificing himself uh, to do it because Donatello remembers about this whole fusion kind of situation, da da da. And basically, the Fugitoid has to blow himself up, blow himself and his ship up along with the Triceraton ship. Well, not the Triceraton ship, but something like that. I think the Triceraton ship, I'm not really sure. Again, I haven't watched the episode. Check out Andre's review on it. But he goes up and basically sacrifices himself and blows up himself the generator and the triceraton ship uh, from what i understand and this basically leaves momentarily for eight turtles two aprils and two cases on earth until the fugitoid of the past comes down the ship beams them all up and that's the turtles april and casey of the past the ones that were on earth earth fighting to prevent the earth from being destroyed they get beamed up by the fugitoid and that's it except for that little uh, scene at the end with the involving the fugitoid of the present confusing right see what i mean by confusing you see and and this is the kind of things this is the kind of trope if you will that you know yeah it, it gets you talking and all that but it's like seriously okay so what happens now now you have a that you have a set of turtles you have the set of turtles it's like okay what now you have the set of turtles on earth that were from the future that are now back in the past back where it all started already already with this black hole generator deal <laughs> And yet now you have another set of turtles, an, another April, another Casey up in space trying to find the black hole generator. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. You see, this is where it gets confusing, and hopefully, this is where maybe there's not, maybe there's more to this situation uh, than meets the eye. Maybe we'll get more answers if the season continues. Because. You know, you have this set of turtles, this ape, you have an April and a Casey from the future, and a set of turtles of the future in the past, and yet you have those past turtles in space with April and Casey of the past with the future toy. It really doesn't make any since you because like i say unless they're planning on doing something it's gonna be sort of dealing with time and space like okay the turtles of the past they have to be brought back to the past where they were and we have to go back up to space and be sent back into the future it's a, you know this opens up a variety of questions because what was the point of the future toy bringing up beaming up april and casey and in the turtles if there's no reason to now i don't get it unless the future toy of the past knows about what happened in the future and he's got another reason for it hopefully they address this before the season's out and hopefully this was not the season finale because if this was the finale then it was one short finale 
But there's more to it because usually the finales, and I know a lot of people know this, even Andre, you know this, are usually two parters, two or three parters. So I'm guessing there's more to this than meets the eye because, like I said, as confusing as it sounds, you have future totals in the past, or the past totals are in space to become the future totals with the Fugitoid, along with April and Casey of the past, or the April and Casey of space. They came from the they came from space. The future are now in the past. It's like there's gonna be some there's got to be some kind of connection because what point is there now for them to be there if the black hole generator is not going to be there for them to uh, uh, for them to to collect unless it's just repeat rinse and repeat. You know what I'm saying? You know this got you got to address this Nickelodeon. You guys have to address this. Now, I can understand sometimes when characters go into the past and they alter stuff. You know, excuse me. I can understand that. Uh, for example, in Sonic the Hitchhawk Sat AM, they did the Blast of the Past two-parter. At the end of that, at the end of that, uh, you had Sally tell Rosie, their nanny, not to leave Knothole, thus preventing Rosie from being roboticized, captured and roboticized. Now, we can all throw our own theories out there as to why. My guess would be the fact that she's the closest thing the family Sally has. Now, the other thing that we could also say got a little altered a little bit was Sonic spinning around Robotnik of the past and causing Robotnik of the past to get have his arm roboticized. We could also assume that another thing that kind of got changed up a little bit was younger Sonic, five-year-old Sonic, and his friends getting captured temporarily. Now, we don't know if they remember that or what, but, you know, they, they might because, you know, you have Tails knowing who Rosie is. You have Tails knowing who Rosie is, and... Again, this is something that, to me, I can I can accept maybe a few changes here and there. You know, maybe where one character does not get affected by something and they remain alive, even in the present, and everybody knows about them. But there are certain things that don't get addressed. Now, however, the minor quirks, because sometimes throughout... 10 years, like in Sat AM, you could probably forget about things. You know, being kids, you probably don't really remember, oh, you have Bunny Rabbit, uh, Bunny, before she was even partially roboticized when she got older, sitting on a gurney about to get fully roboticized as a five-year-old kid. You don't remember that. Or she probably don't remember that because maybe she went through a lot. Maybe she had fun. Maybe she was had, maybe she had fun with, with Rosie letting them be kids. I don't know. But the point is, with these little quirks here and there, little tidbits here and there, they don't mostly affect the present that much. But then you look at something like this, and it's like, okay, so you just had future totals stay in the past, or you had past totals go to the future for no reason, what's going on kind of deal. Because again, with the future toy, it's like, what what's the point of the turtles of the past even going back up if there's no black hole generator to find? If there's no reason for them to go back up and the Earth is saved? You see, these are questions that Nickelodeon's going to have to answer. And I've got a feeling that if this was not the last episode of the season, if this was not the season finale, because they usually come out and they say, hey, we got a season finale coming up. You guys are going to have to pay attention to. You guys are going to have to watch. It's going to really put an effect on a lot of things going forward. Unless they come up with a story to where the totals of the future that are now in the past are getting affected. Like time itself is being affected by the fact that they're there and not the totals of the past. I don't know. But I will say this. I will say this. This is the kind of stuff. Usually shows 
they kind of get it right so that you're not confused. They kind of get it right well, so you're not confused. Like I said, Satyam, in a sense, a blast of the past, they got it right. Okay, they got it right. You know, like I said, there are a few tidbits here and there. You know, like the whole, like even when part one of that, you had Sally seeing her father for the first time, and it took her father looking into her eyes, kind of a classic feature film, Don Bluth kind of deal, to know, oh my gosh, this is my daughter, and she, this is my daughter, and she's from the future. And the thing that really submits it is the ring on her hand, the royal signet. Now, there are some tidbits here, here that maybe might be passed over. Like, in the Void episode, the father, the real king, before the, the, the king, the real king, and that's another uh, uh, thing you have to look into, too, as well, he recognizes Sally almost immediately. You know, he's... You know, you know, maybe Ari showed him, hey, this is your daughter. You see that girl there? That's your daughter. And maybe, I don't know. But I'm pretty sure the king recognized her immediately because maybe he remembers seeing her in the past. We don't know. But the thing, it's little tidbits. But again, after so many years, you might forget something. But you'll still recognize that person. The point is, point is, I know I'm sounding like I'm rambling and it's getting confusing, but that's exactly what these kind of things with these plot holes do. They confuse you because it's like some, sometimes they get it right, even with a few changes here and there. But this, this is a little confusing because with Blast of the Past, you didn't have Sonic and Sally stay in the past. They went back to the future. The only things that changed were some of the things that happened because they were there. Rosie staying behind him. Keeping her promise to stay in the hole. That changed. She stayed. She wasn't roboticized. Everybody knows she's been there. Robotnik having his arm ro partially having his arm roboticized because Sonic spun around him and made him dizzy. Or spun around him enough to you know throw him off his balance and he basically walked right into the roboticizer, or at least his arm did. You know, Snivelly's hair being torn off because of Sonic's speed. You know, things like that. You know, you know, I, I, I can understand I can understand things like that happening decades a decade or so, a decade and a half before a decade or so before. And throughout those next ten, eleven years you don't really recall a lot of that because you do so much more, you've gone through so much more that it kinda gets pushed so far away from your mind you don't remember. But the point is here that you have a situation you have a situation here where it hasn't been decades, it's only been a few months, if not a few weeks, where the turtles that came back from space in the past past from the future came, you know. Well, basically, the turtles of the future that came from space back into the past to stop the black hole generator from destroying the Earth remain there, and the turtles of that timeline get sucked up by the Fugitoid along with the April and the Casey of that timeline into space for no reason. Like, what's the reason? You're going to stop them again? There's no reason to. There's no reason to. Now, now, I understand there have been stories like that, and it doesn't, affect, it doesn't adversely affect what happens. It doesn't. But, you know, here's the thing. Like I said, it doesn't advance, it, advance, it doesn't, it doesn't really affect, it doesn't adversely affect the, the plot because it's like, okay, they go back in time, they come back, it, it, it's, I, basically because 
sometimes when a character comes back from the future and back to the present, that that present self, and they go through the same thing, it's just going through the same thing. That's it. You know, I know there have been several shows where that's happened, where one character or char set of characters have come back from the future, back to the time when they went to the future, just in time to see the current selves go into the future to do the same thing. But it's always been, oh, we're going to set them back to the present and not in the past. Set them back in the present and that's it. And the reason the past selves are going to be sent to the future is just to do the same thing. Because they'll still have a reason. Because they might see the villain of the past that has us uh, doing what they did escape with what they're going after to after him or her with into the past for or into the future for and that's what happens but here it's a little confusing because there's no reason for the turtles to get beamed up now you know what i'm saying there's no reason for turtles or april or casey to get beamed up now you know it's kind of like if my little pony uh, there's a story in the future. There's a story similar to this, and it's the main six going back into the past. Because and they sort of did this before with just Twilight doing it, but it's like the main six going into the past to prevent the midnight, the power of the midnight creatures, or whatever it is, midnight essence of taking over Luna. And if they do that and she's fine, it's like. They come back, act to the present, and Luna may not have any remembrance of being taken over, over and everything, then that's fine. If she does remember being saved and it was the main six that did it, that's fine too. Another good example, in my opinion, of characters going to the past and yet nobody remembering who they were until maybe they hint, uh, yeah, we know who you were before. Or we know what could have happened to you, then it dawns on them. Transformers, War Dawn, or not War Dawn, um, what was it? Wasn't, yeah, I think, yeah, it was War Dawn. War Dawn. You basically have the aerial bots being sent into the past, seeing Optimus Prime I'm, as Orion Pax, and Alita 1, uh, under what, I can't remember what her name is, before she became Alita 1. And then they come back, and you have Silverbolt kind of hint at the fact that, oh, Optimus, we know who you are, by saying his former name, Orion Pax. And then it dawns on Optimus, well, wait a minute. I remember five, uh, five Autobots saving me. It was them. So, you know, I can accept that kind of stuff, too, to where maybe you will recognize who saved you, but you can't remember exactly because time goes on so far well, it goes on and sometimes things become a blur until maybe you get some kind of clue or someone straight out tells you you know and that i can accept like i said just looking blast to the past you can accept that but when you have a situation here to where now there's no legit reason for them to go into space i i don't get it like I said, I think this is the one of the re one of the things that even though, as Andre said, it was probably a good episode, I'm not doubting it was, this is one of those scenarios to where you have to have an answer, you have to have an explanation, you have to have uh, a reasoning why the turtles of the future are now in the past, and the future turtles in April and Casey, oh, in the past, uh, I should say, the past... And the turtles and April and Casey of the past are now in space. You have to have a reason for that because they have no reason to go there now. Unless it's just going to be that whole rinse and repeat deal again. I don't know. But to me, these kind of episodes are what really confuse us and really are the kind that do get us talking like I am right now, but do need to have an answer in the end. They need to have some kind of reasoning in the end. So... Uh, let me know what you guys think down below. Let me know if I made any sense here. I do apologize if I didn't. And I will talk to you all later.